Though risky, shellfish commerce is still the main way fishermen in the Manila Bay area can make a living. The shellfish market in Paranaque is where fishermen bring their catch. The entire family has a role to play in cleaning and selling the shellfish. Survival in a developing world has countless faces. The livelihood of fishermen directly depends on a clean environment, but others need the waste in order to survive. For some local people, garbage has become their main way of making a living. This is a village in Batanga City. It's a polluted place, a dump site. But we benefit from this place because it's our bread and butter. All in all, there are about 400 families here in this village, and we all live off this dump site. A big problem connected to this dump site is the leaching from the garbage. This eventually affects the water underneath the ground. We want the government to do something about it. These kinds of open dump sites are being replaced by enclosed sanitary landfills, a safer and more modern way to dispose of waste. Progress is also being made with waste that is segregated before collection, thanks to the involvement of local governments and communities. Our major concern is to recover waste papers from the companies, from the households, and from the dump sites. Um, well, the, the basic principle of the cooperative is that we believe in integrated approach in solving the waste uh, problem. Uh, so we, we kind of organize the junk shop operators in order to dignify their role in the community. We also established coordination with the, with the companies and with the different uh, commercial and public offices. Revy's cooperative is one of many examples of how civil society can participate in environmental management. Communities are also involved in reforestation activities, such as planting mangroves, which is very important in maintaining a healthy coastal ecosystem. In the last 70 years, 70% 70 of the mangroves have been lost. If they're not replanted by the year 2030, it's expected that they'll completely disappear from the region. Another essential component of the environmental management of the East Asian seas is the direct involvement of the private sector. While the industries have played a very important role in the region's economic development, they've not always taken responsibility for the impact of their activities on the environment. Since the mid-1960s, over 200 million gallons of oil have been spilt in the East Asian seas. But attitudes are changing and some private companies are taking an active role in safeguarding the environment, partnering with each other, creating foundations and funding the fight against pollution. Bataan, for example, in the case of my company, the Petron Corporation, Bataan has been hosting us for 39 years. And we thought that it's time to give back to the province. It's time to really help them preserve the environment, manage the coastal and marine resources. So we took the lead in organizing the business sector, and we thought that instead of coming up with bits and pieces of environmental management programs, it would be best for us to come up with a holistic, a more solid, a more concrete environment environmental management program. 
We got the involvement of the provincial government, we got the involvement of the national government organizations or NGOs, people's organizations, even the fishermen's organizations, the military, the school, all of the stakeholders, we got them involved. It was very important for us to establish our vision, to establish how we would like to get there. But I think the most important obstacle is uh, for all the various stakeholders to commit themselves to the program. So it takes a lot of information, education, and communications campaign. That is the biggest hurdle. Today in Xiamen, a fast-growing city of one million inhabitants in southern China, environmental management is a primary concern for the administration. Public awareness campaigns are a visible sign of this process. The people of Xiamen make every effort to live up to their reputation as model city for environmental protection. In the 1980s, the Chinese State Council declared Xiamen a special economic zone, where the transition from a state-owned economy to a socialist market economy was to be experimented at full speed. Since then, Xiamen has turned into a modern, international, maritime and scenic city. Development has brought new problems such as pollution. And the big questions remain. Will Chinese culture survive the assault of Western lifestyles? And is economic development compatible with protection of the environment? I've lived here by the Yangdang Lagoon for about 17 years. Before the water smelled very bad and there were lots of mosquitoes. I used to watch television inside my mosquito net. Can you imagine? But now the water and the air are very clean. I take a walk by the lake and I feel that I will live longer. Right. Every morning I do a little bit of jogging. I walk around and I enjoy it very much. Mr. Fan Shu Chun was a manager of the local TV station, now retired. Like him, many citizens of Xiamen are very satisfied with the cleanup of the Yandang Lagoon. The rehabilitation work started in 1988. It involved the participation of citizens, recommendations by the scientific community, and the commitment of the local government. Before, it was one of the largest sewage and dumping sites of the city. Part of the restoration was to create a modern sewage treatment plant, a system of water exchange that allows tidal water to flow in and out. It's an area enjoyed by both birds and fishermen. The cleanup of the Yandang Lagoon has proved to be rewarding. New areas of the city were born. Land value has grown considerably and the cleanup has attracted national and international investors. <laughs> 